Coming up after news this morning, the Department of Labor filed a proposed order to halt Black Jewels Coal from leaving Harlan County. And police are investigating one West Virginia shooting that killed a Wayne County man. And we now know the name of a man who died following a crash in Rockcastle County. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Neil Middleton and today is August the 6th. Brandon, it's hard to believe that it's already in August and school starting this week for many of the students. Absolutely, and we're going to continue to see uh, that fog around this morning. So I think again, don't, don't quote me on this. I believe Esther County starts today and then a lot of county or a lot of school districts start tomorrow on Wednesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's take a look at that fog this morning. You can see it's getting worse in most of the area down to less than two miles at Moorhead, close to zero visibility Williamsburg all the way through Jonesville and Southwest Virginia. So be careful if you're traveling a few clouds to our north and west. We'll see more of those progressing through the area later today. Temperatures between about 63 Somerset, Williamsburg, Middlesbrough, Harlan to about 67 there. Prestonsburg, a couple of 65 Jackson Hazard and Pikeville 12 hour planner for today. We're going to see those clouds gradually increase as we head through the daytime hours. Temperatures top out right around 86. We're having another look at the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Neil. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Well, the bankruptcy court proceedings for Black Jewel adjourned last night around 630 and we're still not sure what will become of some key properties. Now we've learned that purchases for Coking Coal, Tie Fort Coal and Mark Energy LLC were all approved. Copper Glow Mining was the winning bidder for the Lone Mountain and Black Mountain properties, but disagreements with different entities like Quest Energy and Caterpillar have left that in limbo. Miners and supporters who traveled to Charleston feel their presence had an impact on the speed of some of those decisions. You get the men back to work. You know, you have some of the hardest working men in the nation right here in, in Eastern Kentucky. And just get them back to work, take care of them, pay them what they're owed and uh, hopefully things will be even better than what they was before. Nearly 40 miners and their families attended yesterday's hearing. They plan to listen to the proceedings today at the protest site in Cumberland when the hearing resumes. Well, Monday morning, the Department of Labor filed a proposed order to halt any and all of Black Jewel's coal from leaving Harlan County. A testimony was heard during yesterday's hearing. However, the judge delayed a ruling until a later date, which has not yet been set. Lawyers for Black Jewel said the coal was sold prior to filing for bankruptcy. While Black Jewel miners waited for decisions to be made at a bankruptcy hearing in Charleston, West Virginia on Monday, spirits were high after the Gillum Foundation announced a gift of more than $700,000, which averages out to around $2,000 per miner. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley says he got emotional when he received word about the donation. He wanted to do something that would be meaningful to them and he knew what they were going through and he felt terrible about what they were going through and uh, he wanted to step up and do something that would help them out in this difficult time. Now this isn't the first time the Gillums have helped Harlan County. When Richard Gillum sold his mines back in 2010, he actually gave his roughly 1,200 employees about $80 million through bonuses and 401k contributions. Harvest Worship Center in Harlan teamed up with another churches in Kentucky and surrounding states to raise money for Black Jewel miners. Last night, they handed out cash to those miners who showed up at their event. WYMT's Katie Cook has more. Before the doors even opened, former Black Jewel miners from all over lined up outside of the door. It looks like we've raised about $11,000. God's really blessed us. That money going straight into the miners' pockets. It just helps everybody out, you know, and personally, I, you know, like I said, I've got four kids and stuff, you know, th this could help a lot with them. Miners receive $52, $150 in cash based on the size of their family. It's a small amount to give under that kind of uh, debt load that they've had, but we're just thinking close to school. It started off, we were raising money to do for some school clothes and supplies, but then our school system came together, came up with funds, and our school supplies are taken care of, so we're just going to give out cash. And these miners are very appreciative, saying in this tough time, every bit of help counts. Anything helps, you know. Uh, you know, everybody appreciates it, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this, and we got generous people around the country, you know, state, everywhere, you know, I, I just, uh, 
I'm glad that they could do stuff like this for us. Members of the church prayed with each minor before they left, hoping for more answers soon. In Harlan, Katie Cook, WYMT Mountain News. Our Father's House in Pineville also gave money out to black jewel miners last night. We now know the name of the man who died following a crash in Rockcastle County. State police say 49-year-old Eric Calhoun died in that crash. It happened around 10 o'clock Sunday night at the 68 mile marker on Interstate 75. Troopers say a driver was unable to stop her vehicle as traffic slowed ahead, causing a chain reaction collision. Calhoun of Middletown, Ohio, was a passenger in one of the vehicles. A fire, a car fire shut down US 119 on Pine Mountain yesterday. Around 6 p.m. yesterday evening, a car caught on fire on 119 south going over Pine Mountain. Police and the San Lick Volunteer Fire Department responded. When they arrived, the car was engulfed in flames. The fire department quickly put the fire out and worked on damage to the road. They do not know the cause of the fire. Fortunately, no one was injured. He managed to get out and uh, get away before the fire got into the compartment of the uh, passenger's compartment. So there is a little bit of damage to the road. I'll be getting in contact with our dispatchers and seeing about getting the highway department out here to try to, to see what they can to fix the situation. The road was shut down for about 30 minutes before one lane was open for cars to pass. Investigators are still trying to determine what caused a pipeline explosion in Lincoln County. That blast killed one woman and has at least 10 families living in hotels. NTSB is leading that investigation. It will likely be weeks before they release any details. There's still a lot of fear among those who live in the area and emergency management officials say counseling services are being made available. In the meantime, all transmission lines that carry natural gas in that area are turned off. All three pipelines are shut down. They're not pumping anything. Uh, so before they can be energized and sent uh, gas sent back through them, uh, those repairs are going to have to be made. Lincoln County's emergency management director said electric suppliers were working through Monday to restore power to homes still affected by the blast. In West Virginia, police are investigating a shooting that left one man dead. Wayne County native Tyler Asbury died Sunday after he was shot outside of a bar in Huntington. He was 19 years old. Now his family is remembering him as a fun-loving, witty young man. He was good at everything he did. Like Anything perfect. he ever put his mind to, he was really good at it. Uh, it didn't matter what it was, he was all in. Hardest thing you ever have to go through. There's a peace gone that will never be failed ever. Huntington police have not released any new information yet about suspects or any arrest in that case. President Trump is going to El Paso and Dayton tomorrow in the wake of this weekend's mass shootings. In remarks at the White House yesterday, the president condemned hate and bigotry and stressed combating mental illness. Both cities are grieving as they try to come to grips with the horrific events that shook their homes. CBS's Chris Martinez in El Paso with more. We have a lot of evidence still to go through. Investigators are trying to figure out why a gunman opened fire in Dayton, Ohio, early Sunday morning, killing nine people, including his sister. Just to defy believability, he would shoot his own sister. But it's also hard to believe that he didn't recognize that was his sister. Police say they moved in and killed the shooter, 24-year-old Connor Betts, in less than a minute. People who knew Betts say there were red flags. He was somebody who made me uh, feel afraid when I knew him as a teenager. Monday night, Ohioans grieved and looked for answers. I'd just like to know that everyone that, that did pass away is at peace and is in a better place. 1,300 miles away, people here in El Paso, Texas, are going through the same grieving process after a gunman killed more than 20 people at a Walmart. We may have differences, but there's other ways there are other ways to address it, not with violence, not with hate, not our children. 21-year-old suspected gunman Patrick Crucius allegedly posted an anti-immigrant manifesto online just before the shooting. As soon as he got here, he uh, was lost in the neighborhood. After that, he found his way to the Walmart because we understand he was hungry. Crucius has been charged with capital murder. Prosecutors say they intend to seek the death penalty. 
Chris Martinez, CBS News, El Paso. The Justice Department is also considering whether to bring hate crime charges against Crucius. Daylight is approaching at Stonecrest Golf Course in Prestonsburg, and you can see no fog there, at least not yet. We take a look at the visibility numbers across the rest of the region, though. It's creeping in on the Big Sandies, down to six miles here at Jackson and Hazard, less than one mile across most of the I-75 and Cumberland Valley corridor, so just be careful as you travel this morning. Dense fog in a lot of locations. Low 60s to mid 60s down south, 65 Jackson Hazard, Pikeville, 67 Ashland and Prestonsburg this morning. Forecast for today, 86 of forecast time. I cannot completely rule out a stray chance for a passing shower as we go deeper into the evening and the early overnight, but the rain really picks up as we head into the overnight hours and going toward tomorrow morning. Neil? Thanks, Brandon. Well, thanks for joining us from Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. And later, one uh, Heath High School shooting survivor here in Kentucky talks about how she was affected by this weekend's shootings. Plus, one man in Florida was arrested after threatening to open fire in a Florida Walmart the day after the El Paso shootings.